Hello everyone, welcome back to Technocraft. This is the fourth module of the course Python for Beginners. If you have not gone through the previous module, I encourage you to watch the previous module to have continuity. Alright, what we will cover in this module? First of all, we will take a look at the Python data type dictionaries. Then we will take a look at exceptions and how to handle different types of exception. And finally, we will take a look at other data types and summarize the module. Okay, first uh, let's see what is dictionaries. I love dictionaries in Python. Dictionaries allow me to store key value pairs of any data very easily. If you have used JSON in the past, then you will be very familiar with the dictionaries in Python. Remember how we had a list earlier that continued the student's name. Well. What if you wanted to add more details other than just the name to a single student like student ID, but we still want the student ID to be associated with the name. We can use a dictionary in that case. This is what a Python dictionary looks like. In a Python dictionary, we have keys and values. In our case, the keys are name, student ID and feedback. And the values are mark, 15163 and none. A key and a value make a pair or more precisely a key value pair. Each key is going to correspond to one value. Now the value can be of any type just like with the list. We don't tell our Python interpreter how the dictionary is going to have strings, keys and integer values. We can just add any type we want. In fact, a key can have an entire dictionary as its value. In this case, we would have something called nested dictionaries. In our dictionary here, we have three keys, which are all strings. One value mark, that is a string. The other value is an integer. And then we also have a none. And this is perfectly fine. Dictionaries are very useful when it comes to storing some kind of structured data. Obviously, we can expand our student dictionary to have it also include grades, course name, etc., etc. And I use them a lot when I do web development with Python because it's very easy to convert them into JSON and vice versa. If you want to group multiple dictionaries together, we simply create a list of dictionaries as you see in the screen. Notice that I do have a square brackets here defining a list. Then we can iterate through the list and use the data each dictionary contains. But how do I get the data? How do I just get the name? I don't want the whole dictionary. I just want the name value like I do with the list. Can I do something like student brother zero? How about you do something better? In order to get the value for a specific key, simply press the pass that key as a kind of an index inside scroll bracket, just like you would do in list. So for our name, you would have to do something like student name. This will give us mark. Awesome, right? One thing to be careful though is that sometimes if you refer to a key that does not exist in a dictionary, for example, let's say student last name, Python is going to raise an exception and say key error, which basically means I could not find that key. One way you can prevent this from happening is by setting the default value that you want to see in case Python cannot find a key. Instead of writing student last name, what you can do is write student dot get then last name and then pass some default value as a second argument. Now in our case it's unknown. So this is what Python is going to give you in case you cannot find last name in the dictionary. If you wanted to do, if you wanted to just see all the keys that are in the dictionary, you can simply call dictionary dictionary dot keys or in this case student dot keys. This is going to return a list of all the keys, which in our case is going to be name, student ID and feedback. And similarly, for a list of all values, just call student dot values. Changing values and deleting them with the dictionaries is the same as it with list using student name equal to James. will change the student name from Mark and James on calling deal student name will delete the name key value pair completely from the dictionary. So in this video, I mentioned how Python can raise an exception called key error if it cannot find a key with the name you told it to in the dictionary. Yes, using the get method is one way 
of taking care of that but there is a different way to handle exceptions in python let's take a look exceptions are events that occur during our program execution that normally cause your program to stop executing it usually means that some error has been encountered and that your program simply does not know how to deal with that recall that in our previous video where we were looking for a student last name but there was no such key as last name defined so python screamed for help and said key error there are many types of exceptions in python i'm not going to go through all of them but there is a way for us to account for them and provide a graceful mechanism for handling those exceptions let's open up pycharm i have the example from our last video here my student dictionary where we try to access the last name without the get method let's see what actually happened when we try to execute this code and As expected, we get the key error as mentioned in the previous clip. To handle this error, gracefully we use something called exception handling. To do exception handling in Python, we work with try and accept block of code. So if you wanted our code to handle this exception gracefully, I will write something like this. here we have our try then there is a column associated with that then we have our print statement uh, then i have a exception added for key error then below that there is a print statement which says error finding the last name and just to verify that it worked outside of the accept log we have a print statement also let's try to execute this code And we, say, we see that we have error finding last name and also this code executes in our result. But our exception is nowhere to be seen. So in the, in the try part of our code, we are telling Python to attempt and re retry the last name of the student except when there is a key error. If there is a key error, when we tell it to print the statement saying that it cannot find the last name. Note that both the try block and the except block can have some more than one line of code. They can have as many lines as you want, although it's probably the best idea to keep it short. So what are the advantages of this? Why not just keep it to a regular Python standard issue exception? I can think of a big one. Under normal circumstances, if an exception occurs, your program will simply stop working. The desktop application you develop will simply crash and you will have to restart it completely. However, when we account for exception and especially when we are able to handle them, our program will not stop working. So it will not crash. It will simply execute whatever piece of code is in the except block and then continue execution with the rest of the code. One common example would be when you are trying to write to a file but do not have the proper permissions on the operating system normally this would cause an exception but if you handle it you can just present the user with an exception saying you don't have permission to write it to the file in fact this can go so far that it is possible for you as a developer to define an unhandled exception handler so that any exception raised anywhere in your code base in handled even though one you do not handle especially like we did here now one thing you may have noticed in our code is that we are just checking for the key error i mentioned earlier that there are many exceptions in python one of them is called type error which occurs when you try to for example add an integer and strings together let's take a look at this code so in this code, we have the last, the student last name defined as Kowalski and then we have a variable called numbered last name. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to try to add number three to the last name. When we, which uh, we now 
how defined. So let's run the code and see what will happen. It says type error, unsupported operand type for intent string. So we got the exception, but we didn't get an error finding last type. Nor did, nor did we get our this code execute text either. Well, this is because we are only testing for the key error, not the type error, type error that we got here. Luckily, adding the type error into the mix is pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at the code with the type error exception added. So here we have the exception added and there's a print statement print. I cannot add these together. Let's try to execute the code. See, we get, we got the message. I can't add these together. Also, we got the message. This code executes. So the type error exception has handled the issue here. But what if there are some error that you don't even know what is going to be? Who knows if it's a type error or a key error or whatever. What you can do then is add a generic exception handler by simply adding except exception. So let's take a look at the generic exception, how to add that. See here I have added my generic exception and along with a print statement unknown error the except exception will handle any error that comes its way that has not already been handled by the key error or the type error that we encountered for in fact many times you will see an exception handler that just has exception error this will handle also the error, but usually it's not great idea to have just that since you do want to try to know what error you got. In fact, if I hover over the except exception in PyCharm, it's going to tell me two board exception close. There is also a way for you to create your own exception, raise an exception you want to at any point of time in your code and have finally handler after your ex exception block which will basically always execute all those are awesome but there is outside the scope of our course now the big question is when do you use exception handling what determines if my code should be in a try and exert block or just not be in it that's really a good question and in reality it depends on you the developer there are some places where you should probably always have an exception handler like when writing to a file but otherwise it really depends on you if you feel that a certain piece of code has a tendency to fail this more often than not happen when dealing with user input then wrap it inside a try and accept block as you improve yourself as a developer so will your knowledge of when to use try and accept blocks and when not to Let's go back to our presentation. So the other data types at the beginning of these modules, I said how you don't really have to worry about types in Python as much as you have to in other languages. We went over some types like integers, strings and floats. There are more types in Python that I did not mention that can be useful, but are a little bit more intermediate level. I'll give you a brief overview of them. For numbers, we went over integers and floats. We also have a type called complex, which denotes complex numbers. And Python 2 had a type called long, which doesn't exist in Python 3 anymore. It was replaced by integers. Then in Python 3, at least we have bytes, which are essentially a sequence of integers in the range of 0 to 255, a sequence of strings or other objects, etc. There is also byte arrays, which is similar to bytes we also have tuples which are similar to list but are immutable you cannot change their values finally we also have sets and frozen sets which are again similar to list but they only have unique objects so one neat way of using sets is to get rid of any duplicate elements in a list 
we had a list with the value 3, 2, 3, 1 and 5. If we converted that list to a set, we see that not only it got rid of the duplicates, but it also ordered the list. From my experience, the one you will see the most out of all these is tuples. But that of course depends upon the kind of work you do with Python. We learned a lot in last four modules. I did my best to present really the fundamental part of Python. Basic data types, list, dictionaries, loops, try and exert blocks. We saw how we can use these individual pieces. These individual pieces are really what will help us create building a blocks of Python. In our next module, we will talk about function and classes and all the fun stuff. But they will be using everything we learned in this module. The basic units of our Python program. I would like to tell you one thing though, even though we went over loops and data types and everything else, that does not mean that I touched on every single thing there is to know about loops or data types. There are many more functions and many more useful, many more uses for all of them. Heck, there is a Python module called ITR tools, which takes the iteration or loops the whole next level. but Armed with this knowledge you have so far, you should be able to continue with the rest of the course where we actually start writing our app. Thank you all. Thanks for watching.